How's it going everyone? Welcome back to New York. We're no longer in Colorado and we're waiting for Christina to show up. Uh, she's not here yet. Dale's back. But today, what we're gonna be doing is uh, taking care of Gina's bus. That's Gina's bus. This is Gina, and Gina's having some issues. <laughs> Lots of issues. <laughs> this video is brought to you by Fantic. Stay tuned to learn about their new T8 Apex Supercharger and Instant Jump Starter Pack. We are gonna be working on Dale and Christina's bus, but we don't have all the supplies yet. They just ran down to Home Depot. Uh, so they're gonna be getting it. So in the meantime, I figured let's take care of Gina. Let's get some stuff figured out here. Uh, we've known her for probably, I think two years now. I met her out in Arizona, out at Schoolie Palooza one year. She came up to the Adirondacks, wanted to visit. She started talking at the campfire about some things that were wrong and well, we're gonna fix them. So some of the things we're gonna be fixing in here is beneath this bed is her solar system. Um, it does function and work, but it doesn't have some of the fuses that I'd like to see in the system uh, just for her safety in there. And the 30 amp is not plugged in and she so can't plug into my house or charge her batteries off of that. Um, so we ordered a 30 amp. We're gonna add that in so that she can have a more robust solar system uh, for her life on the road. Her sink doesn't work because the water pump blew and she doesn't know how to change the water pump. So we're gonna teach her how to change the water pump. And then last but not least is the bus won't start at all not even a little no not at all <laughs> it's like no. i have nothing thank you gina's bus for dying thank you Gina. <laughs> so first thing we're gonna do get the bus started so we can move it away from the woods uh get it closer into the gravel so i can get working on it a little bit easier and uh we also have to get it started anyway because eventually we're gonna kick gina out of here yeah someday probably not very soon I want to say I don't want to be filming. Is it on? Do I have to turn it on? No, it's on, it's on Gina. As long as <laughs> you're in the street. Gina, you can say whatever you want. Go for it. Say whatever you want. Why does he think I want to say anything? I don't want to say anything. I want the bus to start. What's Dale doing? I'm sweating my butt off right now, but I've actually got everything tore out of the bus since we got back out of Colorado. Everybody's kind of getting caught up on the things they needed to get done. Mike's ready to get back to work. I'm trying to get the strapping put in my bus so we can get it to spray foam. Looks like you're making good time on that. Not really, but you know, when you don't know what you're doing <laughs> and, and the person filming you doesn't either, it's easy to impress, so. It still doesn't want to start. I think we got to change the fuel filters, but it's all right, buddy. We're going to get you going. We just got to do a couple maintenance things. What I want to do at this point is get her solar system kind of rebuilt a bit. She does have a functional solar system, but the thing is, um, the 30 amp, I'll just show you. So the 30 amp system right here doesn't exist. The solar wires, she passed through this using it as a waterproof inlet into the bus. You know, technically, totally fine. It is waterproofed, it does go through. She ties it down while she's driving. It's not the end of the world. Um, but we want this to work <laughs> so that she can plug in, for example, at my house right now, where the soccer bus and Navi are plugged in, where Dale can actually just run off the house. When Gina is parked at someone's property or she's parked at an RV park, we want her to be able to plug in and charge her batteries so that she's not only relying on solar alone. So, Christina. Michael. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna work on that. We're gonna work on the solar system. We're gonna get this thing figured out for her. So before we started ripping into the system, uh, I went through it before Colorado and we ordered a whole bunch of parts. So we've got all these fuses, safety protects, 30 amp stuff, all these packages that we get to go through and figure out what they are. It's like Christmas. Don't you think it's like Christmas? Absolutely. Well, I gotta open up all these packages, make sure everything came in, of course, and uh, get installing. We'll get it fixed. I'll be honest guys, this one's throwing me for a loop. There's a lot of wires, they're not labeled, they're not even the right color, and uh, 
that's okay. Um, we can still figure it out. What we're doing right now is uh, Jean is right here marking down. She has a nice list right here and we're just going through each wire one by one and we're trying to find out. That right there is the max fan and the diesel heater. This right here we found out is the water pump. So we're right now I'm just trying to diagnose um, exactly what's going on so that we can rewire it um, and just get it all the right sizes, the right fuses. Gina can tell you, this one's throwing me for a loop. I feel pretty guilty about it, but... <laughs> it's not her fault. Gina, it's not your fault. Dang, am I ripping her bus apart. I'm sorry, Gina! Well, we worked pretty late into the night uh, trying to get all of this system organized. I've now identified, figured out, and rerun uh, most of the system. All I have to do at this point is finish up putting in this switch um, where all of her lights and LEDs are wired into. So I have to get that rewired into that section. And then essentially, I didn't really do anything new. Um, I just replaced wires uh, to new sizing for what she's got here. Uh, ran it so that it's actually, you know, clean and and put away so that she actually can use this section of storage at this point. But now that I actually know what it all is, I can start going through and adding all the breakers and systems that we were looking to do uh, when I first looked at this before Colorado. Some of the things that we're gonna be adding in here are like the 30 amp, like we were saying, the battery charger, transfer switch, uh, and all the fuses and breakers. So at least I know where I wanna put them now. That should definitely go a bit quicker at this point. So I'm gonna get this switch put in and then uh, we'll start going back through it, adding all the other stuff. That took a lot longer than expected, but I feel like that's the reality of it. It always takes longer than you expect, but at this point, um, switches are in, just tested it out, everything works. I'm not really gonna unwire it, um, but now I can go through and um, actually put the breakers and safeties in that she didn't have before, um, and then we can actually power up the entire 120 system, uh, the inverter right here and everything. The fun part's gonna be is trying to figure out how we wanna get the 30 amp the new 30 amp service in and uh, how we want to wire that up. Well, not how, but where we want to wire it up because I want to leave as much storage as possible where I can. Right now, we've got this whole area right here that's wide open for storage. So we want to try to maximize that as much as we can. And over here, we've got the diesel heater, which I'm going to replace for her. Uh, this one broke, so it does no longer works. So we're going to put a new diesel heater in at some point. Just got to try to maximize room as best as we can, you know? It is a short bus after all. Ow. It's also not a very high bus. Now that the system's put together ooh, and kind of back in order, um, I want to put in her new 30 amp switch and we got to rerun the solar in through a different waterproof connection. I think we're going to start there and figure out how we're going to get all these parts in. It's just, uh, it's nice to know that she's safe now. And, well, safer now. She's going to be a lot safer once we put all the breakers in. But um, yeah. It's already starting to feel better. So this video is sponsored by Fantic and they sent over their jump starter. It came out last month to review and test it out. And it's pretty apropos that Gina's bus wouldn't start in this video because it gave me the perfect opportunity to test out and use this unit and really put it through its paces and see how it was gonna work on her diesel engine. Now I know that we're currently in a driveway and it's not necessarily the end of the world with a dead battery because we can always just jump it off of a different vehicle or just trickle charge it off the house. But living on the road, living in buses, vans, RVs, we all know that when you're boondocking out in the backcountry, not having a way to jump 
dump a dead battery can be a real killer for the day. So Fantix sent over this unit about a month ago. So I was able to test this thing out on the Colorado trip, use it on Ivan, uh, Dale's bus, and now in the driveway right here on Gina's rig. And I can confidently say that I've been able to jump Gina's 6.5 liter diesel and Ivan's 6.5 liter diesel uh, with this jetpack, and it was able to start them both from a dead battery, which unfortunately we had in Colorado and here in the driveway. So it's fairly easy to use. It's just like pretty much any other jumper cables you may have used in your life. Uh, you just simply press the start button, connect the two clamps, and then once it says start on the modular, you're good to go to start your engine. So another cool feature about this jetpack is the fact that it is a 65 watt two-way charger. And what that means is that you can plug in and charge it within 90 minutes, but it can also charge MacBooks, laptops, computers, tablets. I mean, it's literally a mobile jetpack that can power up a battery just as fast as it can charge itself. Now I tested this out on my MacBook and it was able to charge up my MacBook from 5% all the way up to 100% in about 90 minutes. So this unit right here, I'm really excited to have and also to see how it's going to test out in the long run down the road just because it's always nice to have extra power anywhere you go and I'll take it any way I can get it and this guy is not only a jump starter but also a supercharger so if you're interested in checking out this jump pack starter and also this supercharger which can be used in multiple ways on the road uh, you can check out the link down in the description to go check out more information and how you can get your own uh, and I just want to say once again thank you to Fantic for sponsoring this video we got the new 30 amp in so the hole that was previously there was too big so I had to make a patch, uh, install this guy so it's waterproofed and in. But now Gina's got a 30 amp at least. Uh, unfortunately, that means I don't have anywhere to put the solar wires. Um, so I got to put a penetration through the side of the bus right here. Uh, I'm just going to use a waterproof grommet. She doesn't have any type of like actual solar penetration box. Um, so I'm going to use just a waterproof grommet uh, and tighten it down on that. It should be fine but the solar and batteries are all right here, so it's pretty much the easiest modification that I can make because she doesn't want to move the panel from this location, so uh, we got to somewhat work with what we got and just make it as good as possible and usable for her when she's you know, living, just because uh, one of the biggest issues with what's been going on with her system is not that it didn't work, it's just that it only ran off the solar, so if there was no sun or she was parked in the shade, her batteries would just deplete, 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 and she has no way to charge them um, so this 30 amp is going to give her the ability to plug it into a charger, charge the batteries up, and then we rewired in an alternator connection so she can also get that done. I'm just going to sit in this box because I'm tired and I can. Transfer switch is done. I still got to wire her 120 panel and then run the transfer switch over to the inverter over here. But I was just talking to Gina off camera about the transfer switch and I realized that I should probably explain what exactly this unit here does. And I'll put a link to it down in the description if you wanna look it up. Um, there's some pretty good diagrams on it on the internet. Uh, essentially what this transfer switch is doing is I just wired in this right here, which is a 30 amp service coming from the outside into a 30 amp breaker and into this transfer switch. Now, that's this wire, wire number one right here. The wire number two that's right here is coming from the inverter, which is behind the camera right now. Uh, you saw that in the B-roll just before we were wiring it up. And then this third wire is coming out of the transfer switch into our 120 distribution panel. What this transfer switch is essentially doing is it's going to figure out automatically if, it, if power is coming from the shore power or if you want power coming from the inverter. So what's gonna end up happening is when Gina is you know driving down the road and she's driving to say a campground she's going to be running off the inverter so power is going to be coming through this wire when she gets to the campground and she plugs in that 30 amp plug on the outside this system is going to automatically recognize that she plugged in what it's going to do is it's going to disconnect the inverter and it's going to allow it to come from the shore power into the 120 distribution and it's going to do it all without her having to flip a switch or do anything in this case now that I got this guy in, uh, we're gonna move over to doing some of the 120 and then getting it run back. I don't have all the parts um, to finish up the system right now. So we're just gonna go as far as we can, you know, just keep using up all the supplies we got until we run out. So I guess we're gonna start working on the 120. And just for fun, while I am digging away on this solar system right here, uh, Dale and Christina, they have been working on their own projects. Christina's back. Hey. I know that for you on camera, she was in the last video, so you haven't missed yeah. her but we've missed her because it's actually been like three or four days since she's driven up, but the van is getting gutted out. So we had a lot of fun on the trip. Uh, it really worked for us, you know, what she built out, but now we're gonna strip everything out. She's starting to do that right now. Once I'm done with Gina's solar system, she should be ready for this. And Dale, Dale's currently, you know, taking a nap. 
Sorry, Dale, I happen to catch on camera when you're not here and you're, you know, you've been, Dale, you've been working hard the last two days. I know you have been. I'm sorry that I pulled out the camera right when you took a nap. Hi, Dale. <laughs> well, let me show you what he's been up to. So the slacker bus is empty. Um, Dale gutted out the slacker bus, got all the parts out, and I got him started on the strapping. So he's starting to go down and do all the strapping on the sides and the roof. Looks like we're gonna be scheduling him for spray foam pretty soon. So once again, uh, once I get kind of Gina's bus done with the solar and everything, um, Dale's gonna be ready for me and Christina's gonna be ready to uh, you know just start moving a little bit quicker on those projects. So there's quite a bit of stuff going on around here. The faster I get the solar stuff done, the faster we can get started on this guy and the van. I've gone as far as I can go without parts. Everything is wired together and tested. Um, I'm gonna have to put this battery charger in for her at some point, um, but I'm gonna have to run to the store. Uh, what I wanna do is actually show you how the transfer ship works. Transfer ship. We're gonna take the transfer ship. Transfer switch and how it works. Yeah, I mean, I'm not gonna actually show you the voltage because I don't wanna play with live voltage like that, but you can hear it click and switch between the different units when we actually unplug it so I can actually, in real time, show you exactly how it happens. At the current moment, uh, if I were to test out that distribution panel which I have wire nets on, it would be showing 120 volts. And if I come over here and steal Navi's power cord, sorry Dale, he just lost his AC while he's sleeping. I'm sure he'll forgive me. He'll forgive us. Just gotta get it back to him quick before he starts overheating in there or something. All right, and if we plug in this guy, it's plugged in, count to 15 seconds. I better get in there quick. And what you're gonna hear is a click. Ready? All right, if you heard that click on camera, what just happened was this transfer switch just automatically took the inverter and said, nope, and just allowed all the power to flow through the shore power. Now, I'm gonna leave the camera inside. I'm gonna go unplug the 30 amp. And what you're gonna hear is you're gonna hear this click automatically back to the inverter like that. All right, you ready? You probably heard that click instantaneously. And now, of course, the shore power is off and it just switched back to the inverter. And only for about like, I forget the actual specs on it, but it's like a half a second. So if you're running like, you know, your computers, your TVs, anything like that, you won't see a change. Like it's not gonna like turn off your TV and turn it back on. It's an automatic, it's very quick when it switches back. I'm sure Gina's gonna really appreciate having this in there now. It just makes life a lot safer and a lot easier. Um, not having to lift the bed all the time to do this manually. So I uh, can't move forward with the electrical anymore. So we're gonna move over to this cabinet right here. We're gonna really quickly switch out her water pump because a few months ago um, it stopped working. And I believe from what I was looking at before, it's because she didn't have a filter on it at the time and some particulates got into the water pump and broke the baffles and just glummed it up and it overheated itself and started burning up. So we're gonna put a filter in and we're gonna put a new water pump in. And besides the solar at that point, I think Gina's gonna be pretty much good to go. The bus now starts, the solar's almost completely redone and her water system will work. Almost there, It's it's been a lot, but almost there. And I know that um, a few other people out there, um, Wonderboom, Eric, if you guys know him, he's got a YouTube channel, you can check him out. And Badge, um, Badge Everyone Needs One, uh, he's also on YouTube, I'll put their links down below. But Eric uh, from Wonderboom, he did all the cabinet work here. Um, Badge did a lot of the mechanic work and now I'm just coming in and helping out, uh, finishing up kind of the loose ends here. So, you know, awesome work by these guys. Um, it's really kind of fun to see the different iterations of this project as Gina's been kind of traveling and kind of building this out. And also pretty cool how, I mean, I've known Gina for two years when she first was looking to get a bus. And I mean, to see her go through the process and learning curves over the last two years has really been pretty cool because she's got a lot of knowledge at this point. Um, don't let her tell you that she doesn't. And she's got a lot of, uh, you know, learned lessons here. So um, it's kind of cool to see her just kind of, I don't know, just get in a bus that's, that's like bus 2.0, you know, bus 2.0. We're down here in the water pump cabinet. Uh, we're gonna get this thing fixed. I was told by Gina that this pump was smoking at some point. There was no filter on that one. So unfortunately, most likely particulates got inside the baffles that are in the bottom of the pump. And I've had this happen on Navi before. Um, I forgot to clean the filter after a winter 
and I ended up having the, the thing clog up on me and it ended up burning up the pump. So the filters are really important. Make sure you put them on your water pumps. Um, so we're just gonna be switching out that pump for this one with the filter and then uh, we'll power it up and make sure that it works. But it's a really easy, simple change. Uh, two wires, four screws, and then just two hose clamps. So it shouldn't take that long, shouldn't be too hard. But at this point, uh, Gina's gonna have a functioning water system. She will soon have a complete electrical system once I actually get all the parts and uh, the bus starts. So there you go. All right, pumps replaced. Now we gotta... You hear that? I have no clue if you can hear that. It's the pump running. That's a really good feeling. Let's see if it pressurizes. So, word of warning to everyone out there. Make sure you put a filter on your system. If you're interested, uh, I put together a tools list of just basic supplies for some of these systems. So if you wanna download that, you can check that out in the description. Um, but yeah, just make sure you put a filter on because you might lose like a $100 pump. No one wants to lose a $100 pump. It's never fun. Well, we started off this video with pretty much saying, hey guys, this is Gina's bus. And Gina's bus has got a lot of problems. Now we can say, hey guys, this is Gina's bus. And it's got a heck of a lot less problems now. And I think Gina's gonna be a lot happier. And I think also in general, her lifestyle is gonna be a lot easier because when you're living on the road and things just start breaking like that, it really can cause you a lot of anxiety. It can really frustrate you, um, especially when you, you know, someone like Gina, who I know she'll say, like she has some knowledge, even if she doesn't admit it, um, but she's not an expert. I mean, she hasn't necessarily done everything on her own. Um, some of it she really wants some assistance with. And it's been a lot of fun going through this project right now because uh, Gina's been kind of doing it with me in a way, like watching me do it. I've been explaining it as I go, uh, just so that she can become more educated on how her bus specifically works and uh, how, if anything does go wrong, how she might be able to fix it. But with that said, um, yeah, I'm definitely gonna get back on this electrical system at some point when the parts come in. I think Christina is getting pretty antsy on the van build. Like I said, I think Christina's starting to get antsy on the van build. She's also filming! <laughs> You know what that means. Um, Christina may or may not be starting a YouTube channel posting yes, about I've her. Yes, I've seen your comments. She's actually going to be filming the van build uh, alongside me. Um, I will be filming it as well. But Christina's going to be sharing her side, her perspective, and her experience as she's going. Um, so not only are you getting my perspective on the whole project and kind of what's going on on the property and other build projects, you're also going to be seeing Christina's over on her channel. Um, I will put a link in one of the next videos as soon as we have it. Um, I will update this video when I do have that link so that if anyone who's watching this in the future, you'll be able to watch it. You know, I think Gina's bus is pretty much there. So in the next video, we're going to be getting started on this van build and seeing how far we get.